Okay, thanks, Gloves. Um, I'll try and be as concise as I can. It's a bit hard to fit a whole farm tour into 20 odd minutes, but um, uh, we're on. Um, so that's us, uh, Bellevue Rural Enterprises. There's the, uh, the figures, uh, 4,200 years joined this year. Um, we're red gravelly ridge country down to grey loams uh, on the to river flats. Um, we uh, all our sheep are run on native country out there. There's very little improved pasture. Most of that good country is um, is continually cropped in the winter program. Um, we've got just under 1,500 pregnant ewes away on adjustment. Um, we use that uh, to just yeah for numbers. Uh, it's yeah it's cheap. Uh, 15 weeks is sort of the average um, time that the user will want adjustment through the lambing period. Um, so 15 bucks a head to, yeah, uh, to run an extra 1,500 ewes uh, through that time. We've, we've also got uh, 1,800 ewes at home uh, as well as the, the few dry ewe lambs uh, that we've got um, yeah, currently. So um, little black dots on the, on the map there uh, where since 2019 where we've run sheep, um, so we're based Tottenham here, just north of Ning, uh, south of Ningen. Uh, we ran our entire flock through 2019 for, uh, for 12 months, middle of 2019, middle of 2020, uh, just out there, east of Wilcannia. Um, and then we've done two years up at Coola. Um, we've, we've, we did two joinings um, up there with part of our our flock, uh, everything's back within a 25-30k radius of Tottenham uh, now. Um, but uh, one thing we found was it didn't matter where we took the mumblebone sheep, um, they outperformed their peers um, in, in every environment. Um, we absolutely smoked the shedders at Wilcannia. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, there's blokes running dorpers out there that couldn't keep up with us. So. Uh, that, that was a really, that was interesting for us, um, yeah, going out there, but um, adjustment's a, a bit of a, um, uh, it offers opportunities, it's also got a few challenges, but um, uh, yeah, like, like anything, it's, it's all to do with personalities, get the right, um, yeah, get, get involved with the right personalities and things will work all right. Um, indication on stocking rates where we run, so Will is about a sheet to four hectares, Tottenham's a sheep to the hectare, and Coolar is four sheep to the hectare. So, um, yeah, so we, we've done, uh, run them in you know, very different uh, environments. Um, and just a few numbers, only because we could um, collect it at, uh, at Coolar purely uh, on, a, on adjustment. Um, like it's the most expensive way to probably run sheep, but. Uh, our net per head was $225 a head there at, at Cooler. Um, I know we talked about, well, there was mention about dollars per hectare, but uh, as how we should manage, we should be measuring uh, with adjustment, you're, you're managing per head because all your costs are per head. Um, you're not paying for the overheads on the farm, you're just paying the, um, you know, whatever it is per, per week to run that sheep. So. Yeah, we run our, our metrics on a per head basis on the, um, on the adjustment. Um, so, it, yeah, at Coolar, you know, it's getting up close to a thousand bucks a hectare um, per, per year of net profit. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a surprise um, uh, to us that we were actually doing that well. Um, so apart from the bit of adjustment we do around the place where we're pretty normal, um, I've got excellent fences. <laughs> And my management's exceptional. Um, it's 23 bogged hoggets there, and that's about the most fun you can have in a morning, dragging them out one by one. Uh, that, that, that mud's over my neck deep, um, which I found out because you can't walk on it, you had to swim in it. So uh, anyway, yeah, we're just normal and we run a few sheep. Uh, this is our breeding objective. Um, yeah, we, we're in the game of breeding ewes. Uh, we don't fatten lambs or, or, or do anything like that. Um, we're, we're breeding ewes. So selecting rams for moderate si to produce a moderate size ewe, um, yeah, aiming for 130% of lambs to ewes joined. 
plus 85% uh, lamb survival uh, and yeah, wool, non-mules, less fly strike, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's a bit about our background. Uh, so we're running traditional style sheep for nearly 50 years from the same stud. Uh, 2010 11, remember, it was, a, it was quite a wet year uh, or, or wet summer. Um, we're getting fly strike. I was the one chasing them around. Um, yeah, mulesing was on the nose. We began, began to become aware of breeding values and um, yeah, the usual succession issues. 2010 11, I'd have been early 30s. Um, you know, want, want, thing, want things, can't afford them, you know, so. What do you do? You, you control the controllables, so produce more, earn more money. Um, that, was, that was what we, tried, we were trying to do. Um, we'd also been talking to our stud, uh, you know, trying to select plainer rams, um, you know, doing everything, talking to them about, we want to see sheep like this, we want to see sheep like that. Um, and we were told that mule, the mulesing issue would go away. Uh, <laughs> Um, and we're also told that breeding values and all the other stuff was, uh, y you know, a bit of a fad and don't, don't chase rainbows. Uh, and that's what their progeny looked like. Um, oh, that photo's not real good. He's a bit of an outlier, that poor fella. Um, but I'm pleased he didn't have too many sisters looking like that. Uh, but yeah, you know, like that, that, that photo is not that old either. Like that's, that was within the last 10 years. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we've come a long way. Um, so where do we start? Uh, I met Chad um, on a, just a chance meeting. I was over in South Australia looking around at sheep and, uh, and, and met Chad, um, came back to central New South Wales had a look at a few studs, um, decided Mumblebone was uh, the direction we wanted to head in. So we came down here in 2012 uh, and bought one ram to trial. And that was his breeding values. And at the time, that was all the breeding values that you could sort of get. Um, but uh, oh no, I mean, that was all that was sort of offered in the sale catalogue. Um, so uh, yeah, he was pretty good for the sale catalogue. Um, but you know, overall where we've ended up, um, he's, he probably wouldn't get picked now. But, um, but yeah, so we joined him to 60 of our planer younger years and we marked about 100% of lambs. 98% um, of the weather progeny made our top weight. We were still, we were still feeding up with the lambs then. 16% um, of the ewes we joined as ewe lambs. Um, and of that 16%, every ewe lamb uh, raised a lamb for the duration of her life. But we chose not to continue ewe lamb joining. I, we just weren't ready. Um, that's, that's basically uh, what it comes down to. However, that little trial was enough to totally change our direction. In the, um, in the following 12 months, we went out and bought 1,800 SRS and NPM ewes. Um, uh, to try and speed up the transition. Uh, we, we never, apart from that joining and maybe one other, we never joined the mumble bones to our traditional. We just, um, it was just gonna take me too long to get the skin off them. So I went and bought skin type um, in, in use and with their, you know, bought other people's culls but had, had the right skin and a few other things that were right about them. Um, and we went, went on from there and the results of that, so you can see we, we bought our, uh, our first ram here, and that, and that was that, that trial. Um, you know, we, we were averaging around about that 75% uh, lambs marked use joined. Um, yeah, fast forward that through to, you know, it wasn't quite 10 years, uh, and we we're up above 140% uh, lambs marked use joined, so we've nearly doubled in under 10 years, our, um, our, years, our lambs marked years joined. Um, so the, the top line there is conception, uh, like conception rate or our scanning rate. Blue line is our marking percentages to use in lambs. So the only reason I, I've got that there is, is the gaps. Um, so you'll see here, there's a big gap between, so that, that just, it's just a visual way for me to assess lamb survival. 
um, when, you know, when I'm looking at things. These lines back here, we weren't, some of our flock wasn't being scanned for twins, so we, we've sort of, that's why they're so close. Um, from here on, we were, oh, we're scanning for twins. We hand fed through 2018. Um, I didn't run over a single lamb with the feed trailer, um, but the gap there is considerable. That year was done at Wilcannia, 7% um, difference there, which you know is acceptable. We're coming home, but also our, our numbers are getting up, and I'll, I'll touch on this, why that gap sort of stays uh, so high. But, um, but yeah, uh, that, um, you know, that, that sort of blew our mind that, that we could, you know, we could keep, uh, yeah, keep that line going up. Um, and obviously, uh, lambs haven't been born yet, so that's why it's zero. That's not that I didn't have a catastrophic failure this year. Um, so with high percentages come high twins. Uh, yeah, our twin lines going up. Our singles are coming down. The red line is our dries. It's it's creeping down. Um, it's kicked back up a little bit this year, uh, but we've had the first joining where we've had. Um, so, so these don't have our ewe lamb uh, figures. So this is the first year where we've had one and a half year olds come in out of the ewe lamb joining back into the main joining. And that probably is the kick up from 3% up to six uh, is, is because, of, because of that. Um, and that's, I can probably blame my, um, my management on, on, on that a little bit. Um, and I'm a bit disappointed with how this has gone. Uh, I was hoping to sort of keep that up there, but. Uh, that's, yeah, I think I got a bit excited. A few things uh, didn't go. I overcooked the years, that's what happened. Um, so we were plateauing at joining, not rising. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, so survival of the fittest, that's our, that's our lamb survival. So top, top line there, single survival, twin survival, triplet survival, and that's our year mortality down here. So we're, we've been under 5% and you know, we're, we're between that 1% and 3% mostly for you mortality. That's, the, you know, that's probably really, that's a key, that one. Uh, you can't raise lambs out of dead use, so uh, keeping them alive is the first step. Um, uh, the other thing I will sort of touch on, um, and there's a, a program that Ferg's involved in uh, with uh, towards 90% lamb survival. Uh, it's really hard to get, uh, I think, uh, we're pushing, you know, I'd love to be above 140% uh, every year in, in marking rates. It just means you've got so many more twins. The more twins you get, the closer your overall lamb survival gets to your twin survival. Um, so I do have my overall survival rates for the last couple of years. So. Like this is out at Wilcannia. Um, th that, those two twin mobs were in excess of 400 sheep in the mob. Um, plus they had 400 hoggett ewes in it, um, 8,000 acre paddocks, two 8,000 acre paddocks um, with 800 sheep in there. Our overall uh, lamb survival was 88.6% that year. Um, then we, we've dropped to 86.3 and 83 percent there so you know we're we're up there um yeah the the easiest if we want to get to 90 percent you just sell all your twins and keep your singles and you'll get you'll get above 90 percent but that's not it's kind of defeats the purpose doesn't it um so uh yeah and we've only we've only recorded triplets for one year um and they they're 68 percent so um yeah there's still a bit of work to be done there um so how do we make the change uh, apart from, well, I'll talk now a bit about uh, coming here. Um, so on these next couple of slides, the dotted line is, um, that's the mumblebone sale average uh, for, for all of the traits. So, so if you, you get your sale catalogue, um, that's the average that's in the front of it. Uh, the blue line is what, what I've bought. Um, so, no need to buy ribbon winners. Uh, there's, uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm buying about the average of the sale. Um, this one here was that one ram. 
Um, but then the rest have been multiple rams um, in, in my ram team that I've been purchasing at the sale. Um, so I'm not, uh, you know, to get those results, I'm not buying the top of the, I'm not buying the top of the sale. I'm, you know, I'm buying a, a, what I think is um, about an average price animal. Uh, however, um, uh, the early traits, uh, fat and muscle is what we went for early on and what I think, um, yeah, if you're going this direction, um, that's what I'd be chasing first. Uh, so, so we chased that pretty hard and, and our, our trend has been above the sale average uh, for fat. It's also been above the sale average for, for muscle. Um, but what, we're, uh, what we haven't been chasing has been clean fleece weight. Um, but you'll see that I'm following the sale average. The sale average is going up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going up. I'm, I'm quite happy with, with where that is. Uh, staple length is, is the same. Um, now, there's plenty of other traits uh, that are up along the wall here that, uh, that, that I am selecting on. I think I select on about 14 traits. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, the, the trends, it's much the same. Um, so what's in, what's in my team? Uh, so anything with a blue number, blow it is, it, that, that's po above the uh, sheep genetics average. Uh, anything with the, the red is, is below it. So, yeah, most of that is good. Um, you know, worm egg counts, uh, early breed trinkle and things like that. Um, I guess if you put a line right in the, in the centre there, um, around about the, the, the fleece weight, I'm, I'm really happy that we're about average with the sheep genetics um, uh, you know, database for, for fleece weight. And I'm, I'm really happy to stay there and um, I'm happy to focus on these traits over here that make you money. So uh, another little thing I'll point out, and this is something I've been doing uh, the last couple of years. Uh, I'm focused on, on, our, on our sheet not getting too big. Um, so we've got a percentage here. Uh, that's, that's my RAM purchase as a percent of the sheep genetics average. So last year, uh, my post weaning weight was 7.5, so 197%. So it's nearly double the sheep genetics average. Um, my adult weight, is 187 percent, so it, it's you know it's still quite high. But but what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep that adult weight number below my post weaning weight. So I'm trying to trick the system into getting an early maturing animal that um, that plateaus by buying rams that um, that aren't as high for adult weight as what they are for post weaning weight. Um, you, you know. I can only do so much with that. I know Chad's very conscious of that. Um, so yeah, and uh, over on the right-hand side here, uh, we've got a few traits that I'm just I'm just watching. Um, so so I'm not I'm not so much actively selecting, but uh, I'm conscious of maternal weaning weight um, because that's you know I think that's an important one in in breeding. Uh, and the IMF and the shear force are just things that. Um, I'm watching in my in my RAM team, uh, putting a little bit of emphasis on on IMF, but um, uh, yeah, you know we, you know we're turning off a lot of weathers to um, to the feedlot job. Um, so yeah, I think if we can if we can offer them a product that's a little bit better than the than the average, well, we're um, uh, you know it, it might create a premium for us. Uh, and so the bottom line, um, so this is our. Uh, this is our gross income uh, since 2008-9. Uh, across the top there, stock sales, wool sales, and the bottom line is our shearing, crutching expenses. Um, so that gets you um, a bit of a look at. So, you know, I guess what's driving the bottom line? Pretty strong correlation between our stock sales and, uh, you know, and our gr gross income out of the sheep. Um, so what drives that? It's conception rate and you know marking percentage. Uh, you know that th this is what's driving our sheep business. Um, it's probably coincidence, but there's my uh, fat and muscle average curve. 
Um, so back here is about 0.7 and up there is a bit over 2. Um, and I don't know, maybe it's just my eyes, but I can see a bit of a correlation with the up and down uh, here in, my, in what I'm buying with fat and muscle and, and what my uh, conception rate has been. Now I've, I've just I've offset that, so that's the 2012 figure. It's over the top of the 2014 figure for conception because it just takes a little bit of time to get that genetics into your, into your flock. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a doctor here before talking about this sort of stuff, so I don't know. Might be a coincidence, it might just be working. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think it is. Uh, so what's driving, uh, what's driving the wool in our business? Um, you know, I said we weren't really focusing on, uh, on clean fleece weight. Um, there's the EMI for, uh, for the same period. There's a pretty strong correlation there between the market and, uh, and our wool income. Um, I reckon if I ask for a show of hands of who can control that, um, well, no one should be able to put their hands up because I don't know anyone that can control the wool market. What you can control is your conception rate. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what I think, you know, that's what we're focusing on. Um, the other thing, uh, you know, uh, Chad will touch on well, six months shearing. Um, but, you know, that's the cost of our shearing. Um, would anyone like to hazard a guess as to where along that line we started shearing six monthly? 2021, 20, 20, that's when we started, right. That's where we started, six months shearing. So um, to give you an idea, shearing, uh, shearing price around about here was about seven bucks a head. It was costing us about four bucks a head to crutch. Um, now, there's a little bit of, maybe a little bit of noise in that line where we were coming out of a lease place and going, doing a few things, but um, the point I sort of wanted to get across, we didn't really, everyone says, oh, you know, it's gonna cost you extra to shear six monthly. Uh, yeah, we haven't really noticed it. Um, Right up the end here is, uh, you know, that's uh, shearer shortage driven uh, increase. Um, that, that's, what's, that's what's driven that. But um, yeah, we don't have a problem getting shearers to our shed. Um, you know, the yeah, contractor doesn't seem to have a problem. Um, we've got blokes ringing us up to come and want, or wanting to shear at our place. So that's, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Um, just a few wool results uh, because everyone you know, might be interested in that. Um, so we've got lengths there ranging from 59 mil, oh, 57 mils in the lambs. Uh, that's, uh, I think that is, that's five months wool. Uh, that's a January shearing, so they're August drop lambs. Um, uh, and they are the dry 18 month old use doing 76 mils. Um, the rest of them, all, all the non-mules will be younger years, AA are the, are the oldest, because um, we're still, still running them out of the system. Uh, an issue with us non-mules is uh, VM. Uh, that, you know, that just about kills us out of any non-mules contract. Uh, there was one came through the other day, maximum in a line of one and a half, uh, and my lowest there is 4.3, so, um, yeah, we'll, yeah, we're probably not going to get the premiums that the guys in the cleaner country are, uh, but you know we're not too worried. Uh, you know, I'm like I said, I'm selling ewes. I, I uh, the premiums now in a non mules ewe, so uh, that's uh, yeah, that's where we're at on on that front. Um, this is our calendar of operations. So I've cut a few months out here where where nothing goes on. Uh, shearing January and the end of June, uh, we shear six months prior to joining, and we shear five. Uh, sorry, shear six month, six weeks prior to joining, and five weeks prior to lambing. Um, mature joining start of March for five weeks. Uh, the ewe lamb joining's sort of just a bit different, and this will change. But this is what we're doing at the minute. Uh, we tease for the first two weeks of March, we put half a percent of lambs, half a percent of rams in with the ewe lambs for their first three weeks. Then the, 
uh, the rams come out of the mature joining and go straight in with the ewe lambs to try and catch them on their last cycle. Um, I, I don't want to spread it any further than that because it gets too confusing down this end. We've got um, another pretty important thing that happens in November in the cropping program. Uh, I don't want to be trying to muck around with, yeah, with doing stuff if we, if we were try, to try and push anything further back. But um, it's, yeah, anyway, that, that's the best we can do at the minute. Um, so I'll talk a bit about our ewe lamb joining 2021, scanned 82%, marked 63% to use joined. Uh, that was our first go at it. Well, we were pretty happy with that. Um, it's very hard to get a benchmark on, on what's good and what's not, but uh, that's, yeah, anyway, it was a good, it was a good start. Uh, couldn't follow it up the next year, but uh, the, uh, so before I go on to next, uh, the, the next year, that was our weights at scanning. Um, so you'll, you just have a look there, like we're between you know, 42 and a half and 47 and a half uh, along you know, dry singles. Twins average 44 and a half, and that's at scanning, so that's 90 days post joining. So if we work that back to a kilo a week weight gain, which is about 150 grams a day, which is not, that's not a, a massive weight gain, those ewes were being joined at an average weight of 33 kilos. Um, so do we need to review the industry recommendations of getting used to 45 kilos to join them, ewe lambs? Um, how many ewes do you reckon I'd have joined if I'd have weighed them up before joining? You know, I, I'd have joined none of them. And um, yeah, so I, so I deliberately didn't weigh them because of that. Um, we, just, we just put the rams in with them. Um, yeah, and yeah, we got, we've got twin, lamb, twin ewes coming through at 38 kilos, uh, yeah, scanning up. So that's, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's more about the type of sheep than it is the weight gain, but obviously the, the industry's got a lot of pretty poor performing animals in it, um, so they've got to set the bar pretty high. Uh, 2022, so this year we've scanned 63%. Um, you remember our staggered joining? Um, uh, 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 a quarter of our ewe lambs came out of the ewe lamb joining the previous year. So that's where our problems sort of start. Um, majority of those lambs are then conceived in the last two weeks of that joining period, and that's our scanners telling us that. Um, and that's to do with, I think, not having enough rams in up front, but. Um, yeah, we just can't work it. So the progeny out of those ewe lambs are potentially five weeks younger when they're joined as lambs. So they're only rising six months old when the, when the rams go, go into them. Um, so they're behind the eight ball. You, you know, there's a big difference between a six and a seven month old ewe lamb, um, you know, in, in, their, in their maturity. And yeah, like it's, you know, it's sort of 20% of their life as you know, difference, so um, yeah, so we've got a few, a few issues to work out there. However, um, this ewe here, is, that's her over there with the red dot. She's, um, now she's a ewe lamb. She's a twin born ewe lamb, out of a ewe lamb, scanned in lamb with twins and She's a bit more compact than her mates here. They're all uh, twin bearing ewe lambs. Um, she's cutting 70 plus mils of wool uh, and she's, you know, nice open face. That's sort of, yeah, a pretty ideal sheep for my climate. Um, yeah, she's nine, nine or 10 months at, at that age. So there's ewes that can do it. We've just got to, yeah, I think we've just got to get better at, at getting them to do the job for us. Um, so yeah, they're, they're out there. And she wasn't the only one. Um, within, that, within that pen full, there was probably two or three of her sisters that were, that, so she was yeah, a twin born ewe lamb out of a ewe lamb, um, scanning in with twins. Um, and yeah, judging by her body weight there, like she'd be, yeah, she somewhere between 40 and 45 kilos. 
Um, they, she'll, yeah, she'll, she'll raise the lambs, I'm pretty confident. Uh, triplets, well, yeah, last year was our first year. 68% fetal survival, which turned out at 203% to use joined. Um, we're targeting an optimum uh, lambing mob size rather than smaller is better. Um, and we're trying to give them as much shelter as possible. Uh, we find it really hard to settle sheep down coming out of mobs um, of a thousand or bigger. You, you get <laughs> you get three ewes out of a mob of 1,500 and all they want to do is jump the nearest fence and get back in with their mates. Um, it, it's, you know, it's a safety in numbers thing, I think, and, and, and we really struggled with it with our triplets last year. Um, uh, you know, just, just, giving, just finding a mob size that is, uh, uh, yeah, provides, provides enough space and um, and they're, and they're not frightened. Uh, like the, the, we had a mob of si we had mobs of six to twenty last year. This year we're all around ten. Um, but uh, but yeah, the mob of six, I oh, you couldn't get them within a hundred meters of the gate, and they're gone. You know they they just you know they panicked and off they went. The mobs of ten or, or bigger, they sort of look at you and yeah, I've got a few mates with me. I'm safe and you know so. You know, I, can, I can only imagine that, you know, if a fox or a pig or something gets in amongst those ewes and, you know, they're just going to run. Um, so, anyway, we're, yeah, we're still, still learning there. Um, so, the future of our business. Um, in one photo there, there's a, um, what's she? She's a, she's a twin-born uh, lamb. She's, that's her second set of lambs. So she was a, she was a twin born lamb. She conceived at seven months of age, twins. She, um, and she lambed down those twins and they survived. And because I've got great fences, um, I, put, I put my rams next to the ewe lambs because I thought, oh, it doesn't matter if they get in, they're not gonna get them back in lamb. Uh, so she, she then conceived twins again while she was rearing twins as a, as a lamb. She's 13 months old at that photo, and that's her second set of twins. Um, I, I'm thinking, and she's probably only got two months wool on her there too, so um, that, yeah, that was back in, I think, in March or thereabouts. Um, there's the potential for us to join ewes every six months, is what I'm sort of getting at. Um, you know, the cattle guys put the balls in with calves at foot, uh, yeah, this, yeah, we'll get there. We've just got to learn how to manage the nutrition. Um, but uh, you know, she, yeah, she's a year that can do it. Can do it, and that's um, yeah, give us give us ten years, and we might be doing something like that. A um, few other things. We'll, we'll continue to do some more trialling. You know, we've got to refine our management of year lambs. Try and maintain our high twinning rates. Um, we're having a bit of a play with um, skewing, uh, with nutrition to skew the male-female ratio across the whole flock. Um, there's there's data out there that says that we can do it. Um, we're playing around with our ewe lambs because we can control their nutrition there in confinement through joining um, to to keep the ewe ram contact as close as we can, so we can sort of control their nutrition a bit. Um, yeah, we're, we're making steps in the right direction. We, we're getting a sort of a 10 or 15% split in, in um, use to, to weathers. Um, and yeah, so anyway, that's, a, that's something we'll, we'll continue to work on across the whole flock, hopefully. Um, we'll start selecting for eating quality traits because I think that's important. Um, and something uh, that yeah, we need to be conscious of is our you know, RW, RWS compliance. Um, and so, yeah, we need to explore or develop a market for ram lambs. Um, anyone who's read through the RWS booklet, which I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a stickler for rules. If there's a rule that you've got to comply with, um, that, uh, that one there is a rule that I don't comply with and I brought it up with my auditor and she's taken it further up. Um, 
the RWS requires us to not not mark, not castrate lambs if we're not keeping them pa up to or past puberty. Um, so we're turning off ram, we're turning off weather lambs at four months of age. So then they're not so, yeah. There, there's an issue there, and I can see um, I can see from an RWS compliance point of view. And there's a few. There's five things in the RWS compliance that. Um, that I think are real issues if someone wants to um, go to town on us. That's, yeah, that's the easiest one for us to, uh, to overcome. The other one is, um, yeah, chemical application. Um, yeah, no, no prophylactic chemical use. Uh, clicks are prophylactic chemical, so you use it before you need it. Um, yeah, so, so we might, yeah. There's a, a few things there, but, but that's, the, that's the main one. Um, and uh, like I was saying at the, at the start, um, you know, the succession issue, you know, we can't afford anything. Um, so you've got to increase profit. So that's, that's uh, yeah, make more money by build shiny things. Um, <laughs> we've, uh, we built that new shed in the drought and uh, those yards went up last year and there'll be a roof go over them uh, or part of them um, shortly. So, um, so yeah, that, anyway, hopefully that's given you, um, yeah, given you a bit of an overview and I have gone well over time, but um, anyway, that, that's my details. I've, uh, if you want to see, I, I post a bit on Twitter of all my figures, so um, yeah. Anyway, thanks very much everyone. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll only give you what I what I know what I've what I've done. I uh, yeah, I don't know that. But the first time we did it uh, back in 2013, those ewes, you know, raised lambs like that. They, they never scanned dry. Um, now it was only a very small number we had to play with. Um, they certainly didn't break down. Uh, I I think it's going to affect their adult body weight. But I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, we've got a lot of guys ring me talking about, um, you know, talking about changing their genetics. I was talking to a guy um, down the Southern Tablelands. Uh, he plays around with, um, you, you know, different types of sheep, and he he was saying uh, he he got some genetics, uh, Riverina, South Australia type genetics, and he's. Um, 100 kilo dry years, uh, I, I, like that's definitely not the way forward. Um, but you know, I'm conscious of shearers. You know, I want I want a shearer that can shear as many sheep as they can, so they keep coming back. Um, if I can join, if I can get, you know, I, you know we're, we're aiming for 80 percent or better of, my, of our ewe lambs getting in lamb. Um, that's our that's sort of a five year target for us. If, if we can if we can trim adult weight, if that if that trims our adult weight back, so be it. Um, like it doesn't affect joining them as a ewe lamb doesn't affect their growth. You know it doesn't affect any of the genetics that we're that, that we're shooting for. You know um, fleece weights highly tied to how much food you put down their their throat. So you know we see that we we see more wool in the better years and less wool in the you know in the in the lighter years, but. Um, yeah, as far as as far as breaking down, I, I don't think so. Um, you, you know, uh, you're always going to get the um, you're always going to get ewes that, that break down. And, and on that point, um, by far the the most um, and, and we're addressing this issue, but the the most ewes that leave our system is for other defects, um, like out of everything. So we. Small amount leave the system as scan dry use. Small amount leave the system as lambed and lost. The vast majority that, that have in the past left our system are from cut teats. Um, so we wet and dry lamb marking. Um, cut teats are, are what, we, what we find. We're now, um, we're, we're on to our shearing team about that. And the, at the January shearing, there wasn't a single cut teat in, yes, however many thousand that we sure. Um, yeah, and they, they're cutting them as ewe lambs, 
you know, because because there's nothing, there's not there. They're not they're not cutting. Once we get past that that first joining, uh, generally the ewes developed a, an udder that's um, yeah big enough for a shearer to see. Um, but but we we made the point once we saw that it was it was happening. That's the only that's really the only thing that, that our sheep are breaking breaking down on. Um, structurally, I don't think it it have have an effect. Um, you know, we we get a marginally higher uh, uh, ewe mortality in the in the ewe lambs. Um, it's yeah, it's it's not it's not great. Like it's not, it's not a it's not significant. Yeah, um, but yeah, they they've got they've got a lot going on, and, and and that's something that as we get as we get better at it, we'll probably um, yeah, I I, you know, I think we can improve that. But yeah, early days. Thanks, Doug.